Hey, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Hopefully you're having a great day. We are back with the How to Make a Simulator in Roblox Guide. Today, we're once again going to be improving and finishing, well, hopefully finishing the Shop GUI. As always, if you guys do enjoy this series or this video does help you guys out, make sure you guys hit that like button and hit the subscribe button and turn this post notifications on if you guys want to get notified when I upload more Roblox development videos. Additionally, I do have Patreon. If you guys would like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file that I make in this video, there's a link down below in the description. You guys can go check out the Patreon and support me if you're Feeling generous. With that being said, let's get into it. So in the last episode, we left off with creating the manager and also the handler, where we started to generate all the shop items and fill the shop up with them. Now I actually realized that I made a slight mistake. You see these two stats right here? The bottom one is actually meant to be the cost or the price of the item, while the top one is actually the stat which the item gives off. I thought that every single item had two different stats, like a coin multiplier and a food multiplier. It's actually the price on the bottom and the stat on the top so we're gonna have to adjust that now so let's go ahead go into the shop gui open the frame up and then look inside of info frame there we go we've now got stats frame so what we're gonna do is we're just simply going to rename stat 2 to price and then we could also rename stat 1 just to stat since there's only ever going to be one stat then inside of price we don't need to set the placeholder text at all but i'm going to and i'm just going to throw our money icon and then just say 50 for an example of what it might look like and there we go that's all we need to do for that then what we have to do is we actually have to go back inside of the manager and this time we have to find info stat one and we have to change that just to stat and we will change info stat one just to info stat and then info stat two, we will change this to info price and we will change this to price. Then we have to figure out where we use info stat one at. So right here, and we can just change that to info stat dot text. And then we could also change info stat two dot text to info price dot text. And there we go. Also down here where we actually create the brand new item in the shop, what we're going to want to do is we are going to want to remove the coins from right here because that's not actually stat we're going to be using at all. And then we got to come back up to here and where we set the coin value you up here for the price we actually just want to set this to self.price so we've got self.food and self.price which we set right down here and that's exactly what we want additionally let's go to the tool config that we have inside of our replicated storage inside of config and then we actually want to change the coin stat and just delete this from all of the tools that we have set up currently so there we go we now just have the food the price and the order and the name that's all that we actually want so the next thing i want to do is i actually want to show you guys how we can generate or create multiple shots in eating simulator they have the food the dna and the rank shop so let's actually start creating the dna and rank shop we're not going to implement the systems yet but we're at least going to be able to make a system where we can generate those items in the shop very easily we're going to go back into the replicate storage under config and this time we can just duplicate tool config and rename that to dna config and we can also duplicate that one more time and rename this to ranks config now we're going to go ahead and open up the ranks and also the dna config and for the dna config we are going to just rename the tools pretty much so we're gonna say retro regular then for the next one we're gonna say fire regular and then for the last one we are going to say earth regular and we're just gonna be doing three for right now and then additionally for the display name we are gonna basically do the same thing just make it look a little bit better so we'll put a base right there then we'll do the same thing down here and then we will do that for the third one right there and then the food, we can honestly just leave all the stats the same. It really doesn't exactly matter for right now. For the ranks, we're going to say noob, red noob, and finally green noob. And then we're actually going to adjust the food stat. We're not going to call this food stat anymore. We're actually going to call this multiplier because the way they do it is they have basically a multiplier which modifies all of your stats and it's not actually just affecting food. And then we will also do the display name as well. So red noob and green noob noob there we go very nice so then what we want to do is we want to go to server script service and go to their player data and make the player data for this so what we're now going to do is we are going to set up the player data for it so let's go over to our player data located inside of the server script service so this will be set up very similarly to how we already have the tool config so it's really simple what we can do is we can copy the tool config and we can paste it and then we are going to name it and then actually let me open up the dna config and the ranks config so that we can easily look at all those files so we're going to rename tool config and we'll first do ranks config we're gonna say rank config and actually you know let me let me rename ranks config to rank config because we have tool config rank config and dna config none of these are plurals so i like to stay all the same for the naming scheme go back to the player data so we have rank config and then we have tool config so let's change that to rank config and it's appearing as ranks config but i think that it should update itself and it 
should actually be rank config. Anyway, then once again, we want to copy this and let's go ahead and paste it. And this time instead of rank config, we are going to do DNA config and DNA config. There we go. Now we scroll down to set up player data and let's find where we have more tool. If you want to make this a little bit easier to locate all the stuff, we could just control F on tool and see where all of the tool stuff is at. So there we go. We can see all of our data related to tool. So a little refresher on how this works is we have an inventory folder, which is parented to the player. And then inside of the inventory folder, we actually have the equip tool, which is a string value. And then we also have the tools folder, which is called owned tools. And then inside of that folder, we have every single tool. And it's actually a bool value for every single one of the tools. And the value is if we actually own that or not. Additionally, we could start the game so we can sort of have a visual display of this. So we go to players, monster, and then we can see the inventory folder is right here. We open that up. Then we see the own tools folder right there and the equip tool string value. And the string value is French fry two because that's the one that I have equipped. And then if we go inside of own tools, we can see that I do own French fry one. I do not own French fry two though. And I do not own French fry three. So that's sort of how that works. And that's how we're going to do the exact same thing for all of the other ones. To clear up any confusion, instead of tool folder, what I would rather do is I want to name this to owned tools folder because I think that's so much less confusing. So we can just copy and paste that. And there we go. So what we're going to do is we can just copy and paste this entire thing right here. So rather than own tools, we are going to say owned ranks. We can actually just control F and replace all of the instances of tools for right now. So rather than tools, we are going to say ranks. So own ranks folder, own ranks folder and own ranks. And then once again, own ranks folder. And there we go. Let's go back up to that line. So there we go. Now we do want to change the tool config to rank config, just like that. And then this time we're not getting a rank. We're not getting a tool. We are actually getting a rank and we are getting the rank table. We also could have found and replaced that as well, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to copy and paste it. So there we go. Rather than tool boolean, we're going to say rank boolean. So there we go once again. And also let's rename it up here. I started a little bit too low. So there we go. Very nice. And then the default rank is going to be the first rank. So the first rank is noob. So let's make sure we say if rank equals noob, then we're going to set that one to true. Otherwise, all of them will be false. So what we just did is we generated the data for the player. We actually could start the game and the data should be already loaded. So if we go into players, monster, inventory, we can now see own ranks. There we go. That's very nice. But we're actually missing the equipped ranks. So let's look into that and make sure that I did that correctly. Uh, okay. I actually completely forgot to copy this value right here. We did copy the folder and then we put all the stuff inside the folder, but now we have to get the equipped. So we're going to say rather than equip tool, we are going to say equipped rank. And then let's throw that right here. And we are going to name that equipped rank. And the default value is noob. So there we go. That should all be good. Let's go ahead and start the game. And this time it should all be loaded perfectly fine. So we go into inventory, we see own ranks. We've got the green noob, the noob and the red noob and the noob we do own. So that's very good. That works exactly as how it should. And then for the equipped rank, we also have noob as well. So perfect. It's working exactly as we want it. Now this is just loading the data by default. What we then need to do is we then need to actually get the save data if there is any. So what we're going to do is the exact same thing that we have down here. Additionally, for the return value, we can actually just comment this out. I don't think we are going to be using that the way that I've sort of set up the data table now is that I've learned that I don't think we actually need to use this return value because we're already generating all the default data up here and then we also have default data set down here as well with these else statements that might be a little bit confusing but just follow along if you don't understand after you do after you work with this for so long you'll probably realize what I'm talking about later anyway what we're going to do this time is we are going to copy and paste what we already have for the equip tool and the tools folder so this time we are going to say player.inventory.equip equipped rank dot value equals inventory equipped rank rather than equipped tool. And we're just going to copy and paste that there. And then otherwise it will be the default rank, which is noob. So there we go. That's perfect. And then this time we are going to loop through the owned ranks rather than the owned tools. And then we can basically just copy and paste that anywhere we see tools at. And then additionally, we are going to be getting the rank instead of the tool. So rank dot value equals that and rank dot name and rank dot name. And there we go. That's very good. So I'm pretty sure now if we started up, we will get an error, which is perfect. That's actually what we want because I want to show you how to deal with this. So the error that we now got is in 116 and that says attempt to index nil with green noob. So what this is trying to do is we're trying to find the return value. Then we're trying to go into inventory and then we're actually indexing owned ranks, which currently does not exist in the return value. Now remember return value is not your player's folder or anything like that. Return value is actually what you get from the data store. And since we've never saved 
the folder own ranks into the data store, it's going to return a nil error when we try to find a value inside of that folder. So own ranks does not exist in the data store and we're trying to find something inside of own ranks. So that's why we get this error. This might not seem like a big deal, but let's actually go ahead and print out something right here and then stop the game and start the game up once again. And then I can show you guys why this is actually a big deal. So when we start this up, we now get an error. And if we look at that, we can see that test was not printed. When an error occurs in the script, it basically stops the script right there and nothing, and it does not go any further down. So this print statement was never printed. So imagine if we had player data below this data right here, and this error just completely stopped the script right there, then the player would be missing all of their other data. So if the player's missing all of their data, and then they leave the game, and the data actually saves, then you pretty much just ruin some of the player's data because of this. So what we want to do is we want to stop the game then we want to go back down to that line so right here we sort of have a check for this already we say if return value dot inventory dot own ranks and then we try to find the value so this is basically a catch to see if the value exists and if it doesn't then we just set it to false automatically but the issue with this is we now have to have a catch for the own ranks inside of return value so a really simple and easy way to handle this is by saying if and then we can actually just copy what we're looking for so we're going to go return value dot inventory dot own ranks because that's not what we're finding currently Currently, and that's what's throwing an error and then we're going to say then and then what we're going to do is we are just going to throw this all inside of here so then we can start the game and we can now see that test has been printed that's perfect so what we're doing with this check right here is we're going inside of return value and we're looking for inventory and then we find inventory because we already have inventory saved from the own tools then we're looking for the folder known as own ranks and if own ranks exist then we go through this and we load the data if it doesn't exist then we just keep going through and we'll load it later then we just keep going through through the script and follow the rest of the script. Now, additionally, you might be wondering why we don't have to do this for previous data. And the reason for that is because we only have to do it with new data that we're actually adding to the data store. We actually do have to make a slight change. Since we did just comment out the return value, we actually have to add an if statement. So we can actually delete this and we can use this if statement right here. So let's uncomment that out. And what we're gonna say is if return value does not equal nil, then load the player data. And then we are gonna add an end right here because we need an end for that if statement. Okay. So now what we can do is we can wipe out our data store just to test this. So just throw in a random number or letter or anything like that. And then we can see that nil has been printed. So nil was printed because return value does equal nil. So it did not try to load any of the data. The reason that it equals nil is because this player has never actually saved any data to the data store. Once we actually leave the game, or for some reason the game does save, like it does save every 10 minutes or whatever, then we will have data saved inside and return value will no longer be nil. So let's go ahead and stop the game and then we can start it once again. So we can see that the data was saved. Let's start it again. And this time it's not nil anymore. It's actually a table full of different data. But the issue is now, and hopefully I'm explaining this in a way that you guys are understanding i also do apologize because i should have explained this in the data store video but i learned myself and i'm trying to improve it as we go on so the reason that we have to add the check-in for the inventory dot own ranks is because the own ranks is actually nil that is returning nil and that will throw the error and that'll break the rest of the script and the reason that it's returning nil is because we are not saving it so it's not able to be found within inventory yet because we have not saved it hopefully that's making sense to you so every single time we do add new data we should add a check or else we might have issues that we run into into. Realistically, if your game is still in development and you're not actually releasing it, so you don't care about the data store, you don't actually need these checks for really anything. You just need to add the checks after you have an active data store, which you don't want to lose. Anyway, with that being said, sorry for that long explanation. We can now delete that print statement and this whole thing is pretty good. It loads all the data and that's exactly what we wanted. So now let's actually go down and save the data. So right here, this is inside of the save function. We can just once again, copy and paste this. And rather than equip tool, we're going to say equip equipped rank and once again equipped rank there we go and then the owned ranks table we're going to get it from the inventory dot owned ranks and make sure that we have owned ranks table rather than tool we are going to say rank so once we have the equipped rank variable and the own ranks table we're going to go down here and we're going to copy this and once again we are going to change this from equipped tool to equipped rank and 
own tools to own ranks and then we'll set it right there and we will set it right there okay perfect so now let's go ahead and stop the game and start it up upon loading in we don't have any errors that's great but let's look at player data we can go inside of inventory and we can see we only have equip tool and own tools and that's because the data has not been saved yet so now when we stop the game we can actually look at the table which has been saved because we print that out then we can go inside of inventory and we can see we now have equipped ranks equipped tool we have equipped rank equipped tool own ranks and own tools and we can look inside there that's that's all that data and that's all that data so now when we start it up our table has been modified so we go in the inventory and now we see all the data that we should see it's perfect so that's exactly how it should look and that means that we did everything right perfect all right so we just did that for rank now let's do the exact same thing but this time for dna so we have equipped rank which let's make those a little bit closer so there we go we've got the equipped rank we'll copy all of this let's make sure we copy all of that this time and then i'll put two spaces two lines in between it just to make it a little bit easier to filter them out slightly once again i'm going to control f rank i'm going to say dna we really have to think about how we want to make the naming scheme do we want to make dna all capitalized or do we want to make it lowercase or do we want to make like the n and the a lowercase i think i'm just going to try to make it all uppercase because that seems like how the word dna should be printed so let's start up here equip the dna equip dna equip dna there we go all oh, that's perfect then equip dna's do we want to make dna's plural i think we I think we should just to stick with the naming scheme. So we're going to say own DNAs, own DNAs folder.name is own DNAs. And then this is lowercase. So I will once again, lowercase it right there. DNA config, DNA boolean, owned capital DNAs folder, DNA boolean, DNA, 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 DNA. Okay, there we go. So let's go back up here. Let's set the default DNA to the retro regular. So rather than DNA equal noob, we say equals retro regular. And then that should load all the data. So once again, if we want to test this out real quick, we can look inside a player, monster, inventory. We've got own DNAs. Yes, we've got all the DNAs and the equipped DNA is noob. Perfect. The equipped DNA is actually wrong. We forgot to change that. So luckily we tested it out and checked real quick. So noob rather than noob, we do retro regular. Perfect. So that's all good. Rather than testing, once again, we can just copy this now. Oh, also, since I did add that new if statement, let's reformat the code a little bit. So there we go. That's all good again. So let's once again, copy and paste this stuff. There we go. Now, instead of rank, we are doing DNA. So equip DNA, equip DNA. There we go. Own DNAs. And now the lowercase comes in handy. And then uppercase once again. And then lowercase once again. And, oh my gosh, uppercase, lowercase. And I'm just going to copy this because I don't feel like doing that again. Okay. So there we go. Perfect. Then we want to change noob, of course, to retro regular. And that should be all we have to do. So this time we're checking inventory own DNAs to see if the own DNAs folder actually exists. And then we're looping through the own DNAs folder DNA value. So yes, this all looks perfectly good. I think that's perfect. We could start this up, although it is a little bit unnecessary, but we should not get any errors because we had that check there and then we can stop. And now let's go ahead and do the save data. So once again, copy this and paste this and owned and then we will be replacing rank equip dna owned dna's table dna 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 and then lowercase for the rest of these which i will fill in manually okay cool equip dna is that value and then we loop through this table just a little double quick double check to make sure everything's right okay there we go so now equipped dna and owned dna's and then we got to make sure that we set it to dna and once again dna's okay perfect so now we should be able to start the game and when we load in we will not have any of the dna data inside of the table but then when we stop it and open up the table go inside inventory we can now see we have all of the dna data we have the ranks and the tools that's exactly what we needed so start it up and we should be all good to go so look inside inventory we have all the dna data that we needed awesome okay so my apologies a little bit about this episode i'm not too happy with how this episode came out i realized that i did sort of have some mistakes and things to improve upon so that's what i wanted to do with this episode originally i planned for this episode to be a lot more gui focused and finishing the actual gui or adding more features to it but the thing is is that i realized that we already spent like 20 minutes on improving and changing the way that the data actually does work so i don't want to make this like a 50 minute video again and go even further into it so i think i'll just end the episode here since we did cover a lot of the data stuff and then we'll pick it up next time on the next episode with implementing all the new data and everything else 
else like that into the actual GUI. Anyway, with that being said, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, as always, make sure you guys smash the like button and also hit the subscribe button and turn this post notifications on if you guys want to get notified when I upload more Roblox development videos. Additionally, I do have a Patreon. If you guys would like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the actual game file that I made during this video, there's a link down below in the description. You guys can click that, go to the Patreon, and support me if you guys are feeling kind. Anyway, with that being said, I hope that you guys have a great day. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.